Blessings, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Real Talk Cafe. We off campus today. We out here on the, um, at Elnor's Kitchen with uh, Elijah, Leon, and Jeff. Jeffrey. You know, these some brothers, you know, they, they came up, you know, with, with, if you want to call it on the rough side of the mountain, but now they living, you know, to where they're living in the light to where, just like in the Bible, um, when um, Paul, when he transformed to from Saul to Paul, he said he was blinded by the brilliance of light. So whatever light that, you know, they was blinded by that brought them to the light, it don't matter as long as they're in the light now. So they're out here doing a um, Stop the Violence rally. And so we just want to just sit down and talk with them and just hear what they have to say. So since Elijah is the founder, we want you to just tell us what, what you got going. What we got going today and from now on, you know, is that we're trying to cease fire. You know, we're trying to silence the violence. We're trying to curtail, we're trying to stop the problem before it starts. You know, everybody want to react, call 911, call silent observer. If we can get to these kids before that, then we ain't got to go through that. Uh, it's about us growing up as men. And, you know, I'm going to refer to the Bible. The Bible says, when I was a child, I thought I spanked, I did as a child. When I became a man, I put away those childish ways. And I'm sitting here too with two men and myself that done put away those childish ways. And there's nothing to come out of that rut if you don't reach back and help somebody else out from where we come from. So that's what we're coming together today to do, to start a dialogue, to start a conversation, to get familiar with everybody around here so that we can we can build a relationship and try to put a, a curb on this violence that's going on. So how many years did you do, Elijah? I did 15. Okay, so what brought you to the, the light that, you know, when, like you said, when you was a child, you thought of the child, but when you became a man, what made you remain a man? Being honest, it, it ain't nothing but God, you know. Uh, he gave me a second chance at life, and, uh, you know, I come from the streets. I know what it's like, so I'm not frowning on these kids. I'm telling them it's a better way. And we come from the streets, you know, so, and we did all that, so we came out of it. So it's nothing, like I said, if we don't give back, we'll teach them how to come out of it. So basically you're saying like, Dr. Dre, you've been there and done that and ain't nothing good in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. And so two I, things, death and prison, you know? Yeah, I met this brother back in 2012, when I first moved to Grand Rapids and doing Clear program where they had, um, you know, the ex-felons um, would get out and they would talk to the new guys that just getting out and making their transition that much more easier or letting them know that it could be done, basically. So with that being said, we're going to have a Brother Keenan. Uh, so you, you say you did 12? Yeah. And so what, what really brought you to the light or to the, the, the knowledge of understanding that change needs to take place? I mean, like you said, first of all, it was the higher power. But second of all, it's knowing where you want to go. Like once you understand where you want to go and the road that it takes to get there, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to change what you're doing because the road that you were on, it'll get you there, but what come fast, go fast, what my mom always <laughs> says. So one, once you work harder for it, you respect it more. So as you respect it more, you, you gain more because you try to hold on to what you have worked for. And then once we get to where we're going, it's like Mr. Elijah said, each one teach one. Now it's, once we get to a certain point, we got to start giving back to show them and give them the knowledge to show them that they can do it too. Yeah, and that's, that's one thing I learned because I met a lot of guys, you know, I started doing prison ministry in 2006 at Parnell facility in Jackson and I met some heavy cats you know if I was still kind of you know yeah kind of shady you know not being who you know God called me to be I could have made some major connections because I just happened to be blessed and not get caught up not saying I didn't do nothing that could have landed me in prison I just thank God I didn't but I came to the light you know I heard a brother say one day you probably was just one deal away from getting busted and so with that being said we're gonna have the brother Kendrick right Jeffrey. Jeffrey, I don't know what I said, Kendrick, but yeah, man, what, you know, what, how long did you do? Nah. Okay, so, yeah, you still seem pretty fairly young, because I know sometimes prison, it kind of, it kind of restores you, you know what I mean, and, and, and makes you, you know, look younger, you know, cause especially when you come to the light, so what made you come to the, the light? Man, just, uh, for one, uh, my son, wow. I had 
my son, man, and uh, he was looking up to me, and I think uh, he was looking for the old me, and I was trying to give him the new me. And uh, I, I, I kept on just sitting back and watching him and watching him. And I said, nah, it, it, it's, it's a better way to show him how to be successful without being in the streets. You know what I'm saying? You can have what you have now just by, like we said, working at nine to five or, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just uh, building your own, your own business. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it just made me want to just touch, not just only him, other children around him too, and other kids in the community. You know, like I said, we come from the struggle. We all played a part of the reason why some of these kids act the way they act now, because they looked up to us mm -hmm. and they respected us and they wanted to be like us. And so now if we can put a stop to it and tell them like, look, what I did, it may look, it may look cool, but it wasn't cool. It got me taken away from my kids, my, my mother, my family, and y'all, the ones just, the ones that looked up to us. So, uh, you know, like we all came together and we were just, you know, trying to sit back and put, put things in motion and just see how we could come up with an idea and a plan to, you know, put a stop to it and also, you know what I'm saying? Give them something to do with it. You know what I'm saying? Because we can't just say this is what, what this is what we want for y'all. Stop doing this. Stop doing this. And we ain't got nothing to give them to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, man, if I could just touch one one kid life, I think I've done my job. Yeah. Because like Pop said, one teach two, teach three, teach four, teach yeah. more. And with that being said, you know the thing that we really don't consider is our kids while we in it. Mm -hmm. You know, until we get caught up, because that's the main thing we should, I thought about that the other day, you know, my daughter would have been out there with, you know, just without her dad, and she needed me, just like y'all kids need a job, but one thing about it, at the end of the day, they, they kids got them now, yeah. and they got them forever, and they kids have saw the change, because like my daughter, she saw me, her first half of her life, you know, living the street life, so I gave her that part, that's the only part I knew as she was coming up. So then the second half of her life, she saw me in Christ fully, not just attending church. I'm talking about in Christ, you know, where the change takes place. Like the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the only thing going to help you mm -hmm. is when you get around some real OGs like that, that have done it. Like uh, Snoop Dogg said, the game is showed, not told. Yeah. So we can sit up here and tell you all you want. But basically, at the end of the day, the choice is yours. So you can get with life or you can get with death. So with, in closing, Elijah, you want to... Uh, uh, share anything with the people? Yeah, I want to say that uh, I want I look up to these little brothers because they generation up under me and I know they're going to touch the generation up under them and that's our goal you know, to just keep it going leave a legacy for our kids to live by because, you know poverty breeds violence and and us living in the poverty stricken area and us living in the poverty. Hey man, come on now. Oh, we we in the middle of something. Uh, excuse me. Uh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you cut this game. <laughs> 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 see, we all need it at all times. You know what I'm saying? So y'all excuse the interruption. But I just want to say, you know, life is nothing if you come out of that life and don't try to give it back. So that's our major objective is to give back like you say each one teach one so that's the thing you know we can't help everybody but we can help somebody so that's your job to do what you can do to help somebody so therefore that somebody can help somebody else so with that being said uh brother keenan you have anything you want to say in closing man just when you get out or whatever y'all do stick to your plan even when it seems like it don't work keep working because a lot of guys get out here and jump right back into the same thing the next day. Just stay focused and keep doing what you're going to do. Okay, well, Brother Jeffrey, you got anything to say in closing? Same thing my brother just said, and like we're like we doing now, if you see somebody in the struggle, I don't care if it's a, a, a another adult, it ain't got to be a kid, reach out and try to give them a hand, man. If you're blessed, it, put your blessings on him, give it to him, because everybody needs some help. It could be a, a, a older uh person or a younger person, you know what I'm saying? So if you got the power or the blessings that put your blessings on somebody else, do that because we all need help in some type of way. Yeah, the famous words of Lil Troy, 
He said, and the one to be a ball, there got to be a better way. And guess what it is? And these brothers are trying to tell you. So, like these are saying, elementary school, make effective use of class time. With that being said, peace. And thank you for tuning in to another edition of Real Talk Cafe, where we're going to show the world the definition of real. Peace. Mm -hmm.